I think two things. First off, invariably markets are forward looking, right? So it's not exactly about the immediate coronavirus increase in cases, hospitalizations. It's more about what's the economy going to look like later this year. And I think when you start looking at, you know, we have a new president, we have a Democratic a majority in both the House and the Senate. You know, the one thing I think we can bet on here is we're going to see a lot of spending, Akiko. You know, everything from this $1.9 trillion bill they're trying to pass, you know, on top of the $3 trillion we already passed last year, plus the $900 million that we've already passed in December. And we could see some sort of infrastructure deal down the line, which would be another multi-billion dollar bill. So we're just looking at so much liquidity out there. And I think what the market's telling you right now, you're starting to see interest rates go up. You're starting to see commodity prices go up that inflation is a real thing and printing all this cash is certainly going to cause inflation as we look out, you know, later in the year. Yeah, and on the other front, you know, valuations uh, appearing stretched here, you would want to see earnings catch up to that as we uh, as we move through 2021 as well. When you look at today's updates from Goldman and Bank of America, both those uh, stocks under pressure despite the top and bottom line being we got from Goldman Sachs. Uh, when you think about that, is that also kind of the same story, more focusing in on what the forward guidance looks like from some of these companies as they report, since that seems to be, uh, I guess, based on today's moves, uh, what the market seems to be saying? I think a little bit. I mean, if you look at the S&P 500 specifically, you're at 23 times forward earnings, Zach. And if you look at that historically, that's expensive, right? We're in the most expensive, 90, let's say 90th percentile of expensiveness when you start looking at the S&P 500. And of course, that's really driven by big tech. Now, I think financials specifically, as interest rates going up is a big deal for financials in terms of their profit margins. I think you have to remember too, financials went up like 19% since the beginning of last quarter. So I think you know, maybe a lot of the good news around earnings was probably already priced in. You might just be getting some profit taking here. But I think realistically, if we think inflation is going to continue to kick in, interest rates are going to continue to go higher. I have to think, you know, because multiples on banks, they're a lot cheaper than the S&P 500. That's probably a pretty good place for your money still. Um, and I don't think it's really about last quarter earnings so much as what are earnings going to start looking like, you know, the latter part of this year. I think that's really where the market's looking. Ryan, looking at specific sectors, energy, one that a lot of our guests have noted, we're seeing that sector up in a big way today. The expectation being that once the economy does begin to reopen in a big way, uh, that's going to bounce back. How are you playing that space? I definitely love energy. And I think I even said it on your show a couple months ago, along with being very bullish earlier last year. Uh, so I do think the reopening of the economy trade has a lot to do with energy. And if you look at demand in China, they're already above pre-pandemic levels. Because as we know right now, you know, their economy is way more reopened than ours is because they're way ahead of where we are in this cycle. So I think demand's gonna continue to go up. Production right now is at like a two-year low. So at some point, we probably are gonna get back to about 20 million barrels a day. So I think energy here has a lot of room to move on the upside. And I think that's definitely part of that reopening trade that you definitely wanna have in your portfolio. Yeah, credit where credit's due. You did you did talk about the uh, the opportunity there in energy earlier in the year, and obviously been a standout here in terms of a sector by sector. You think about the uh, you know the 1.9 trillion dollar package we could come see through here with the Biden administration. I mean, is that a reason to maybe believe that we are still going to be chugging along here higher, breaking through new high highs, or, or is there something out there that you are concerned about, considering that that valuation level we're at? Absolutely. And I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't help the self-promotion, but I appreciate that, Zach. So <laughs> basically, when you start looking at growth stocks specifically, I do think it's the tale of two markets. And there is rapid or, you know, there's rampant speculation going on right now. You can look at just the small uh, amount of options, you know, smaller option contracts are up like 50 percent in volume this year. You start looking at valuations on growth. It's not cheap historically. So I do think there is a lot of speculation. I mean, when you start talking about Tesla, and you start talking about things like Bitcoin, which to me, I'm still, you know, I, I'm still can't figure out exactly, you know, when we're going to start to use Bitcoin as an actual currency, as opposed to what I call the greater fool's theory. You know, I'm buying it today. Some fool can buy it from you know, a higher price for me later on this week. You know, that's how how speculative it is. So I, I do think you have to be very careful right now. I think big tech right now is probably fully valued. They have a lot of regulation issues coming down the pipeline. And again, if you're buying the S&P 500, you're not really buying 500 companies. I've talked about this a lot. You have about 25% of that index that drives the whole index. Now with Tesla in there, 
And those stocks don't specifically really participate in the reopening of the economy. So I think it's really important that you take advantage of that rotation. And I don't think it's any coincidence that technology has underperformed since the last quarter. It's up like 9%. But then you start talking about old school sectors like materials. We mentioned financials. Materials are up like 30% since the beginning of last quarter. And that's right around the time we had all the positive vaccine news. So I, I think if you're going to really participate in the reopening of the economy, you've got to spread your money out into everything we've talked about today, energy, materials, financials. And you got to start to like take some profits or dial back on anything that you have growth related because valuations are high, speculation is high. That's not really a good combination for you know good long term growth like we've seen over the last decade in those stocks. So, so building on that, Ryan, um, the the retail play that Zach just alluded to, uh, how, how does that change? the way you look at some of these names, especially the consumer facing ones that aren't, to your point, trading on fundamentals right now? Well, I mean, I, in my mind is it's like history doesn't repeat, but it does rhyme. And it starts to look a lot like 99, 2000. And it's probably not going to end well, which is very good for my business, by the way, because, you know, being diversified right now and preaching diversification, that's really going to come in handy as we move forward. So when you have things that aren't trading on, you know, you have sectors that aren't trading on fundamentals anymore, and you just have to go back to 1999-2000. Like I took a, a chart of Apple back then. You know, Apple had the same trajectory upwards that Tesla did, and then the stock proceeded to lose 80% of its value. Now again, it's at a much better place today, two decades later. But you have to remember when the Nasdaq went down 80% when the tech bubble burst, it took you to the year 2015 to start making money again. So I think the bottom line is here, it's okay to be early on these trends and start re-diversifying now, even if they start going up a little bit more from these levels. Eventually, if history is our guide, it's not going to end well, and you want to be ahead of that trend, not behind.